Good morning, everybody. Um, Please this morning to welcome Frank Norton Jr. to join us as we uh, get started today and I had some a few thoughts to share and I got a few questions for uh, Frank and um, those of you that are new with our company and may have missed now Frank it seems like it was months and months ago but it was just a few months ago that we were together at Cherokee and you were sharing with us some of your thoughts on the economy which I'm I'm guessing now if we had to do it over oh, again yeah. be a little bit be a little bit of a rewrite but um, those of you that haven't heard or met Frank before. Frank is, uh, uh, are you third generation in our business, Frank? I'm third generation and I have a fourth generation working for the business. So that's good. Great. That's great. Out of Gainesville, Georgia. And he is a graduate of Georgia Tech with a degree in architecture and is uh, CEO and chairman of the Norton Commercial. Do you go by, you section them off, is it Norton Commercial, Norton Residential? Right. A parent company is a company called Norton Legacy, which is a, a holding company for all the various things we do. Great. And um, most relevant to some of y'all that um, in terms of Frank's conversation with us before, he is the publisher of the Norton Native Intelligence, which he puts out each year. And he has a passion for strategic planning and let's call it visioneering about what the future would look like. And so I thought it'd be a great time for our friend. And, and I'm leaving out one of the most important parts in that we are joint venture partners with his family with, under AFH Insurance. So the, the power of the tools that we offer that John Sanger offers through AFH Insurance is powered by the Norton family of companies and all of those great relationships they have in insurance. So Frank, thanks for taking a few minutes with us this morning. And um, I just had a few questions I'd love to get your perspective on. When we think about what's kind of the environment that we're in, what effects do these job losses and the wide ranging stock market have on housing? What, what do you um, so I, I'm studying everything I possibly can, reading all day long in between all of these Zoom calls and trying to, uh, and I'm publishing a market watch on a every Friday basis for a period of time. Um, and you're welcome to forward that. It's um, to help lift all our business up both uh, our competitors as well as our friends in the business. Um, you know, this is an unprecedented time. Traditionally, when we have low, un when we have high unemployment, especially hourly wage earners, it's going to affect first the rental market. And that's going to mean that people can't pay their rent or one of the two people that might be roommates couldn't pay the rent. And so there's going to be some adjustment in the rental housing. Um, and, and then it also will affect a slowdown in credit underwriting for first time home buyers, which is really um, a, a function of our marketplace, but not necessarily um, the urban areas of Atlanta, maybe the ex urban areas where the prices are still under $250,000. Um, the stock market um, the volatility gives a little bit of uncertainty, first for second homes, because second home owners feel much more comfortable to buy that second home. And then second, it may have a slowdown um, effect in or people pausing to buy the larger price houses, a million and up because they are looking at that overall portfolio of wealth. They have different baskets. They have their income. They are the 401k. They have the primary residence. And then they have the what if fund. And sometimes that what if fund gets so large, they want to buy a larger structure. And so we're starting to see some fundamental uh, behavioral and psychological issues with, with results of the market. I still think we are a little ahead of ourselves. We will know a little bit more whether this lifts in two weeks or four weeks or six weeks or the challenge is it's much longer than that. And then we have to adapt. I think I saw in a distribution that you put out um, late last week, early this week, I've been reading a lot like you have, where you kind of summarized it and, and I think you articulated it that um, unemployment and fear of jobs really affects more modest price homes and the upper tier is more affected by the swings and the, the big swings in the stock market. That's right. And if we are at 15,000, it's one thing, but if we can swing back in this recovery and we're, it's up today, it may be up and down tomorrow, it's actually volatile. And so once it starts to settle out, yeah. um, I was on a national call that said, we probably not a V shape down and straight up. We're going to be, we are, a V-shaped down and then trail and a hockey stick up. Um, 
you can imagine that on a, on a graph. And we're going to see a really um, difficult and challenging second quarter, that's April, May, and June. We're going to see us recover, a recovery quarter, um, July, August, and September. And then everything that we hear, we're going to see a surge in the last, uh, last three months of the year. Great, great. How is real estate and housing in general going to fare over the next 12 months, assuming that we start to see these, uh, we start to see the moderation that you talk about. When we're talking about specifically about housing, you were kind of talking about a recovery in general, but do you see people jumping right back in or how are you seeing that shake out? Well, let's look at a baseline. First, we have three months, three and we started this March 1st at three and a half months supply of houses in Metro Atlanta, maybe a higher, a higher months of supply in that higher price point and a much lower, I mean, we had a 13 minute supply of houses in Metro Atlanta under $200,000 or $250,000. So we started with that baseline. We also start with a baseline of a very low interest rate and that's continuing. And we start with a baseline of 3.5% unemployment rate. That's marginally employable or unemployable anyway. And so we were tight March 1st. We may see um, an increase short term of um, unemployment um, that may slow down. But again, we're not building 65,000 houses a year. We're building 25,000 houses a year. We are, are building um, a number of apartments in Atlanta, but apartment vacancy in Atlanta is under four and a half percent vacancy anyway. And so we still have strong job growth in that urban center. And the ex-urban areas, uh, maybe the suburban areas, I think will benefit. People are going to want to flock away from urban cores of some of these hot spots around the country. We're already seeing calls, uh, more, more activity in the Roswells, Alpharetta's, East Cobb's, where there is less density, that's going to be a factor in terms of housing. And what we think, what I see happening is the strengthening of, of communities with strong healthcare services, accessibility to healthcare. And we currently have that in all of Metro Atlanta. We have a good platform of healthcare. We have a good tax rate. And we may see some benefit long-term from some of the Northeastern cities and areas where um, they're just really some healthcare and density stresses. Okay. All right. My final question is a year from now, how will things in our communities and our lives around Atlanta and North Georgia be different? That's really interesting. Um, I, I, I'm housed in my dining room. Uh, I don't have a private office and I'm currently uh, designing my next house and I am already thinking about what my next office is going to be. Mm -hmm. In the communications is that we're going to actually see more than one office area in houses. It may be a student area, a, a room that can be turned into a virtual classroom. We may see more high school students taking virtual classes um, and there needs to be that separation. Unfortunately, I don't have double doors on my dining room and so my grandchild is on the other side of the room and may see a little bit of ambient noise and so we're going to want to be able to close ourselves off. Yeah. We're also going to demand a new utility. We have water, sewer, gas, we've got to have high-speed internet. We've got to have fiber. And so you're going to see a push of additional infrastructure and we are preparing ourselves for that next event, that, that, that next event. And so from a home office space. The other interesting thing is I'm talking about, talking to lots of people all day long. The home has been, been our refuge. It's been our peace and quiet. It has been, um, it's our cocoon. And we're noticing the cracks in the walls and we're noticing the, uh, the tightness of space perhaps. And we're noticing um, that uh, we might need to do a little bit of renovation. And so we may see a little surge in renovation and we're going to see where my next place is going to be. And so we see, may see some fundamental changes. We may see some multi-generational housing um, where there's a, a boom in multi-generational housing where there are two master bedroom, not master bedrooms, master bedroom suites. And one of those suites might have an office cubicle off of it. And so we may see some fundamental changes in this. Um, I do worry about density of housing. I worry about um, this separation of space that we currently are experiencing. And then I think everybody wants an outdoor private space. 
an outdoor area where we can socially distance ourselves from maybe our neighbors in terms of privacy, but whether that's an apartment, whether that's a rental house, or whether that's an individual single family house, is that we are going to feather our nest, build a stronger cocoon, and enjoy the housing. Housing is right now part of the pleasure that we have in this chaos. It's that peace and quiet. Yeah. Frank, thank you. Thanks so much for sharing uh, your thoughts. And I knew you would have uh, some great answers to those questions. And I know our agents will love hearing uh, your thoughts. And I just hope everything is well up in Gainesville. And uh, we so appreciate your professional relationship with us on this level and also with our in insurance business. And I hope you and your agents and your family stay safe. And yours as well. We've had a wonderful long time interconnecting of our two families and it'll continue. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon.